Welcome to the Prevention of Discrimination Ordinance Foundation Level Training. This training has been developed by the Consortium. The Consortium brings together a number of different organisations, including the Guernsey Institute, Walker's Law Firm, Guernsey Employment Trust, Focus HR and Equality Guernsey. If you would like to use subtitles, please turn this on on the device you are using. This foundation course will provide an introduction to the new Prevention of Discrimination Ordinance. By the end of this session, you will gain an understanding of human rights law which relates to prevention of discrimination, existing legislation in Guernsey, the Prevention of Discrimination Ordinance, Karen from Equality Guernsey will introduce the topic of human rights and then Sarah from Walker's Law Firm will talk about the new legislation. My name's Karen Blanchford and I'm a representative of Equality Guernsey, a group of charities and individuals passionate about equality and rights. We're going to start by talking about human rights at an international level and slowly work our way through into the local Guernsey context. So what are human rights? They are an important set of internationally agreed rights and freedoms that belong to every person. These rights are based on principles of equality, non-discrimination, fairness, self-determination, independent and respect for dignity and rights of others. We are all equally entitled to our human rights without discrimination. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted by the UN General Assembly in 1948. It was the first legal document to set out the fundamental human rights that were to be universally protected. There are 30 in all, but today we'll just focus on the first two. Article one is around all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Article two, freedom from discrimination is what ensures this equality. The power of the Universal Declaration is in the idea that it will change the world it inspires us to continue working to ensure that all people can gain freedom, equality and dignity. These rights are as relevant in Guernsey as they are in the rest of the world. So what about human rights in small places such as Guernsey? I'd like to quote from Eleanor Roosevelt, who is a principal um, person to set up the Universal Rights and Declaration. Where, after all, do universal human rights begin? In small places, close to home, so close and so small that they cannot be seen on any maps of the world. Unless these rights have meaning, they have little meaning anywhere. Without concerned citizen action to uphold them close to home, we shall look in vain for progress in the larger world. Locally, we are really excited to have the UN Declaration of Human Rights translated into Genesis. And we were very grateful to people that took part, for example, Jan Marquis and others who have translated this document, the most translated document in the world, into our local language. I'm going to pass back to Sarah now, who's going to introduce discrimination legislation in Guernsey. Thank you, Karen. Uh, so I'm now going to talk about discrimination legislation in Guernsey. So as you can see here on the slide, I've set out the existing legislation that we have in Guernsey. So first off, we have the Human Rights Bailiwick of Guernsey Law 2000. This law was registered in 2001 and came into force on the 1st of September 2006. And the human rights law is one of the most significant pieces of constitutional legislation enacted in the bailiwick of Guernsey. It's intended to encourage a modern civic society where equal rights and responsibilities of our citizens are clearly recognised and properly balanced. Its effect is to allow 
people to claim their rights under the European Convention on Human Rights in the bailiwicks, courts and tribunals, instead of having to go to the European Court of Strasbourg, as was previously required. The law underpins this by requiring all public authorities in the bailiwick to act compatibly with the Convention rights. In addition, we have the Sex Discrimination Employment Guernsey Ordinance 2005. Now, this applies in the employment context only, and it prohibits discrimination on the grounds of sex, marital status and gender reassignment. It was extended in 2016 to also cover maternity and adoption leave as other um, protected grounds. So moving on to the Prevention of Discrimination Guernsey Ordinance 2022. So the new Prevention of, of Discrimination Ordinance was passed by um, the states on the 30th of September 2022, so a short while ago, and will largely come into force on the 1st of Ox October 2023, with some parts to be implemented at later dates. Now, this new piece of legislation will extend protection to other protected grounds, initially with a phase one, and I'll come on to talk about those protected grounds in a moment. And importantly, it extends protection outside the employment sphere. So unlike the sex discrimination ordinance, which is currently in, in force, um, which only relate, which only um, relates to employment, the new discrimination ordinance has a wider um, remit. So the implementation date, as I said, most provisions will come in on the 1st of October 2023. But as I said, some of the some of the duties are going to be staged. So duties on schools and education providers, they won't come into force um, before 1st of September 2025 duties to make changes to physical features of premises, not before the 1st of October 2028, and the duty on public sector organisations to prepare accessibility action plans is not before the 1st of October 2028. So clearly this will allow um, organisations and uh, those bodies that are going to be covered by this new piece of legislation some time to prepare and I'll come on and talk in a, in a moment and give some further um, examples. So the UN conventions. So the approval of our new discrimination ordinance means that the states of Guernsey can potentially move forward on other UN conventions, including those listed on, on the slide. And um, our new legislation, <coughs> excuse me, will place us in a better position so that we're meeting our obligations on the UN conventions that have already been extended to Guernsey and which we're signed up to. In addition, it will also mean that we may be able to request an extension of the UK's ratification to Guernsey of other UN conventions. I'm now going to cover a summary of the new discrimination ordinance. So moving on now to talk about the protected grounds. As you can see from the slide, I've set out the existing protected grounds, and these are under the sex discrimination ordinance, as, as I've mentioned earlier. So those are sex, maternity, adoption, marital status and gender reassignment. Phase one are the five new protected grounds that are going to be introduced by the new discrimination ordinance, and those will be effective from the 1st of October 2023. And those are, as listed on the slide, disability, carer status, race, religion or belief and sexual orientation. You'll see on the slide that I've also included a phase two. Now, we don't have um, an exact date for when this phase will come in, um, but it's anticipated to be a minimum of two years after phase one. And um, we're still to see the policy paper setting out the detail on this. But what we're anticipating is the incorporation of the existing grounds from the sex discrimination ordinance. So those in column one into the new discrimination ordinance. 
And the reason for this is that there are still uh, that there's a slightly more limited set of prohibited conduct currently in our existing legislation than in our new discrimination ordinance. So and also, obviously, our sex discrimination ordinance, as I've mentioned, is currently limited just to the field of employment. So it will widen out its remit by bringing it into or bringing those protected grounds um, into the new discrimination ordinance. In addition, um, age as a protected ground um, may well be introduced as part of phase two. Now, not on the slide is a possible phase 2B, and that would be the introduction of equal pay for work of equal value. Again, there's been no um, nothing decided yet on that phase 2B, and we would be awaiting um, sort of further policy letters setting out more detail on this. So moving on to look at who does the new discrimination ordinance apply to? Well, it still imply, apply, will apply to employers as our existing legislation. But as you can see from the slide, it's far, far wider reaching than the sex discrimination ordinance. And some of the key additional groups um, who need to be aware of their obligations under the new discrimination ordinance um, are providers of goods and services, accommodation providers, schools and education providers, clubs and associations, charities and um, voluntary groups. Um, of course, employers will also need to be well prepared in advance of the new legislation coming into force, as they will have these five new protected grounds to consider, which will impact policies and procedures and be relevant from recruitment all the way through the life cycle of the employment relationship up to termination of employment. Service providers will cover a wide range of organisations such as restaurants, hotels, banks, transport providers and tradespeople. As I've mentioned earlier, we will be running um, uh, further courses um, during these um, during these modules and we'll go into the legislation in greater detail. And session three is all around employers responsibilities under the new discrimination ordinance and session four will cover the requirements for service providers um, as well, goods and services. And as mentioned, we're also running a session on the reasonable adjustments for session five, and we know that will be a, a topic of real interest um, for everyone. So moving on, I just want to touch briefly on the main forms of discrimination and other prohibited conduct, which are going to be set out within the new discrimination ordinance. So firstly, direct discrimination. This is when somebody is treated less favourably because of a protected ground. So, for example, refusing to serve someone in a restaurant because of their race. Discrimination by association. This is treating someone less favourably because of a protected ground of someone they associate with. So an example here might be isolating a colleague because they have a family member who is gay. Indirect discrimination. This is applying a policy, criteria or practice, sometimes referred to as a PCP, which disproportionately affects those who share a protected ground and which cannot be justified. So an example here might be refusing to allow an employee to work flexibly where they need to do so for childcare or health reasons and where there are no good business reasons why the role cannot be carried out flexibly. So there's no justification why um, the role can't be carried out flexibly in that case. Harassment. This is unwanted conduct related to a protected ground or of a sexual nature, which has the purpose or effect of violating someone's dignity or creating an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment. So that could include, for example, making offensive comments about Muslims. And it's important to note that this is not a type of discrimination under our current legislation. So this is definitely a new form of prohibited conduct that everyone should be aware of. Moving on now to victimisation. This is where you are treating someone unfavourably for raising a complaint under the new discrimination ordinance or supporting someone else's complaint. So an example here might be refusing to renew a lease 
um, because the tenant has raised allegations of discrimination in the past. Duty to make reasonable adjustments. This is where a provision, criterion or practice, physical feature of premises or lack of auxiliary aid places a disabled person at a substantial disadvantage. Now, the duty to make reasonable adjustments applies in the circumstances which I've just set out. It's only a duty to make adjustments that are reasonable. So would need to look at um, you would need to look at cost and practicality. But examples include allowing people to book your services in a different format, providing equipment that someone needs to allow them to do their job or making alterations to premises. And we'll come on to cover this in far more detail in our other sessions, particularly in session five. Discrimination arising from disability. This is treating someone unfavourably because of something arising from their disability where this cannot be justified. So um, an example of this is um, where um, if an employer may dismiss um, employees due to absence levels and if an absence level arises from a disability, the employer would need to be able to justify their decision to dismiss as being proportionate in all circumstances, which would involve looking at things like whether attendance is likely to improve with treatment and, the, uh, and considering carefully the effect of the absence on the business and others, and whether or not reasonable adjustments have or can be made. So what measures are coming in to support the new discrimination ordinance? So firstly, we will see um, the new Employment and Equal Opportunities Service, EEOS. This um, was formerly the Employment Relations Services, so ERS, and EEOS will offer free advice and importantly, pre and post complaint um, conciliation. Um, so free impartial advice and guidance will be available to both parties. They'll focus on the informal dispute resolution. A pre and post complaint conciliation will be offered in all cases and there'll be proactive education and awareness raising from EEOS. And this will cover a wider remit in the future of all protected grounds, not just sex and not just for employment. And we'll also cover goods and services providers, education and um, providers and schools, accommodation and membership of clubs and associations. In addition, we can expect to see guidance notes um, being produced and these will be available before the new legislation comes into force. These will be an excellent source um, of guidance for um, anyone that has questions about the legislation and how it's going to work in practice and will also set out plenty of examples. We're also going to see some changes in our Employment and Discrimination Tribunal. We'll see the introduction of legally qualified tri tribunal chairs um, to consider any claims that may be brought under the, under the new discrimination ordinance. And we're also expecting to see new tribunal rules of procedure. Thank you for watching this training. Go to My Learning for more training on equality, diversity and inclusion or for more detail about responsibilities under the ordinance.